just fat shame him no, on camera? No, I didn't fat shame him. I think I you fat shame. No, I didn't. As a fat guy, I'm offended. No, I... Outro, take two. So for all you fans of Big Beaver no. Brewing out there... I gotta, I gotta oh, bring you in. Sorry, I gotta... <laughs> Yo, Lane's making you look like a bitch right now. <laughs> yeah, well... Cut! <laughs>Hey, welcome back to another episode of Cerveza City, the show where we honor goats, 42, Wakanda forever. And I'm joined by two future goats in the beer industry, Michael and Lane from Big Beaver Brewing. Gentlemen, thanks for being on the show. Thanks for having us. Appreciate it. All right, gentlemen, what's the first beer we're drinking? Uh, we'll start off with our Brewed IPA. Um, so this is it's a little bit of a different take on an IPA. Um, it's, it's clean, it's crisp, it's dry, um, citrus notes, um, and we kind of made it to to appeal to the, the non-beer drinker, I guess you'd say. So that's our first one. I think we pass one each around and we'll judge who has the best pour. Sounds good. <laughs> Lane is start, already. You should start crashing out of the can. That'd <laughs> yeah. be impressive. Oh, I think Lane took that. <laughs> that was a nice pour. Right? <laughs> that's not bad. Yeah, Cheers, gentlemen. Cheers. Cheers. Oh damn, that is a good beer though. Yeah, so it's it's a beer. We're from small towns, so we wanted to make a beer that basically appealed to the to the farmer, the rancher, the the person that drank Bud Light and Coke and your Pilsner all their life. So this was kind of our attempt at that. So we think we did a pretty good job, and it's been it's been going well. So nailed it. Yeah, we're gonna get right to the point. Episode three, we're down in Piston Broken Brooks, and we had a special guest, Callie. In on the interview she had a wet beaver um big beaver brewing <laughs> you gotta explain the name uh surprising enough uh or i guess maybe disappointing to some but it's actually not an innuendo it's uh it's uh it's named after a town that a couple of us grew up in and nearby um back in saskatchewan it's a small little i don't even know a hamlet maybe 10 people live there right now so that's actually what it's named after but there is actually a big beaver brewing in colorado that is named after what you're talking about <laughs> after big beavers <laughs> yes after exactly. big beavers and that's in colorado doesn't it feel a little bit inflammatory to take that away from canada like beaver is our thing yeah no i agree i think they're pretty big assholes for doing that but <laughs> what can you do <laughs> <laughs> took their name <laughs> yeah so we thought we'd take it back i like it Okay, Big Beaver is an actual place. What's the best part about Big Beaver, Saskatchewan? So the third owner, uh, he grew up in Big Beaver for a good portion of his life. I grew up in the town 10 minutes away called Cornac, Saskatchewan. <clears throat> but speaking to them both, I would say that the best thing about growing up there is just the simplicity of life in those parts of the world. You just don't have the the rat race that is the city. Not to say that the city's bad, it's just it's just a different way of living. Maybe call it a little simpler. <clears throat> now being from Saskatchewan, how outdated being in Alberta now are jokes about Saskatchewan? That's a good question. Um, you know, surprisingly enough, um, I moved here eight years ago almost. I don't hear too many jokes about Saskatchewan. Mainly the hillbilly, the redneck thing. Yeah, the a bunch of farmers. Bunch of farmers, bunch of ranchers. But other than that, that's actually, everyone seems pretty nice out here, surprisingly enough. <laughs> Debunk the myth for me. <laughs> if your wife leaves you in Saskatchewan, can you watch her walk away for at least a week? You know, it depends what time of year. You know, post-harvest seeding time, probably. You know, you know, if you have a good crop, though, you know, July, probably not. You know, she's going to disappear right in there. Okay, so. lost in the corn maze. Yeah, barley maze. Field the dream sort Canola of Canola maze, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, 100%, yeah. Love it. But being from Saskatchewan, living in Alberta, what is your favorite province uh, in Canada? We'll get Mike and then we'll get Lane. I don't know how to answer this. I feel like I'll get persecuted if I answer wrong by either camp. Um, Saskatchewan still home for me like I've lived in Calgary eight years and I love Calgary and I plan on being in Calgary for quite a while um, but Saskatchewan's still home for me so I, I gotta give it to Saskatchewan and being that our company is named after Saskatchewan I feel like I'd piss a lot of people off if I didn't say that 
How politically correct of you. Unimpressed. <laughs> Lane, hit me. Oh, Alberta. Oh! oh. Yeah. Well, he's from Okotoks, yeah, I, so... Oh, you're from Okotoks. From Okotoks, yeah. Hello. Filming in Okotoks yeah, right now. Yeah. Shout out to Grand Slam Sports for providing the space. 100%. Yeah. No, it's no question. Albert is better. You guys want to fight to the death about this? I'm kind of skinny, so I think he'd win that <laughs> battle, but, you know, we'll talk about this when the cameras are off. <laughs> <laughs> now, Big Beaver uh, Brewing is our first contract brewer. For the folks at home that don't understand what that is, do you want to give us a little bit of an explanation? Contract brewing is is renting or, or buying or <clears throat> whatever you want to call it, space from an existing brewery. Uh, using our recipes, we, we provide to them. They brew the beer for us on, with our packaging under our name. Um, and then we go ahead and sell it. So it's a way for... <clears throat> um, it's a way for us to get our product out there, to get our brand out there, to get our name out there, to get our beer out there while we secure location, find equipment and do those things to get a physical location up and running. And who, I don't know if you're allowed to say, but who are you brewing out of? We are up with uh, Field and Forge in Innisfail. And Field and Forge in Innisfail. They're so. been amazing. So Shout out to Field and Forge in Innisfail. If you're in that area, Red Deer area, make sure you check them out and also pick up some Big Beaver Brewing beer. All right, through the magic of video editing, we have clean glasses and we're gonna pour our second beer. Gentlemen, what do we got here? Next up is the Saison. Um, <clears throat> traditionally a uh, Belgian beer brewed in the, the French region of Belgium, I think back in the day. Don't quote me on that, I'm not a history expert. <laughs> but it's, it's a... It's a different style for sure, but it's going to have kind of spicy notes, almost peppery, and it's going to have fruity notes um, as well to kind of balance that out. Um, and it's traditionally it was made for the farmers during the summer, and so uh, we thought we'd make one for everyone to enjoy all the time. Who won that pour? I actually Fuck, think you yeah, got yeah, that I one this time. Hello. Did. Yeah, that that was much better. Much all better. right. Well, pressure's on you now, Mike. <laughs> yeah, fair enough, yeah. <laughs> 0 for 2. Yeah. What are some of the unique challenges that you guys have found as contract brewers? I think the biggest challenge has been trying to, to portray or communicate who we are and what we want to do with our beer and, uh, you know, hopefully soon our space. That's been the toughest thing. I think... If you have a physical location, you can kind of, and you can bring people in and you can create that atmosphere and you can create that spot that is enjoyable, that's fun, that's lively, <clears throat> that communicates your personality and the things that you want to do, that is a huge win for you, right? So as a contract brewer, when you don't have that ability, it makes it tough to kind of get who you are out there and get your, your, your message out there and to get your product out there. I feel like people don't take you quite as seriously for, like, and not in like a bad way, just like for sure until you have a physical location where they can show up, like even trying to sell the liquor stores and stuff. It's like, oh, where are you guys located? It's like, we don't have a spot quite yet, but um, so hopefully <laughs> once we get get a spot, it'll change. Maybe yeah. we're just <laughs> salesmen. <but>. <laughs> That's <laughs> probably the case, yeah, <laughs> for sure. When you go to liquor stores to try and get your beer in there, are you just like, here, try orange beer? Uh, no, we actually we, <laughs> we're better than that. Yeah, we do That's use why the we're not selling. names. Yeah, we should actually just simplify it and just say, hey, we got green, orange, red, and white, and then drink orange. Yeah, drink orange. Give it a try. If you guys want to bring work. me along, just as like color commentating, I'd be good. Yeah, we can do that. We can so in something. hired. I just found a new job. <laughs> this show. We, can't, we can't pay you, yeah. but <laughs> yeah. Can I drink beer for free? Yes, sure. So yeah, let's go. <laughs> Uh, we always we always study the cans. Canning is such a big part of branding. And I really like, you know, it's clean, but it also gives to the simplicity. It kind of looks just like a pencil sketch of the prairies, really on brand for you guys. But then you told me something super interesting. Yeah, so this is actually something we've never, like, we've told friends, we've told family and stuff like that, but something we've never told the public. But there is actually a little beaver hidden on every single can. 
Um, it, it, it differs from beer to beer because the, the, the line art on the bottom is the same, but the placement of the beaver is different. So I don't know, maybe stay tuned. We'll do a, a giveaway for the person that finds a beaver on all the cans first, but, uh, I like but yeah, it. it's, a, it's a, something we've never actually told anyone, but we find it's pretty neat. That a is little neat. homage to the to previous beers. Now, you guys made an Instagram post and captioned it, our saison is so damn good, the birds are trying to steal it from us. Not today, you sneaky bastards. Where does the humor come from? As a comedian, I'm just super interested in how we got to that point. We're both dads now. So when you become a dad, you immediately revert or convert or however you want to put it to cheesy jokes and so that's now our who we are we live and die by that yeah and just throw things out on social media and 99% of them are terrible and mm -hmm. yeah. 1% people like think and they're funny pretty sure the only people that laugh at what we write on the cans is us so that just goes to show you that's red what's on the can but yeah, fair enough welcome to comedy Com comedy <laughs> Oh, I can't even say the word. It's wonderful. Dad puns, what's up? All right, cut that shit. We're going to read the cans. All right, we got one last beer. Lane was like, fuck it, I'm just going to do Already it started. anyway. <laughs> Mike, let me get your glass. Oh, you got some there? Yeah, I got some here. Okay, well, I'm going to... It's all you. You got half a beer, and you have not poured correctly yet, so no pressure. Oh, no, I'm... Well, there's not enough to even fill the glass, so what I don't am I know supposed what you're to do? About. I just hear excuses. Yeah. That's a good pour for how much beer I had to pour. You know what? I, I would say. I ain't mad. Maybe. And I'm a little heavy, so. Oh, that's all right. It's a stout. On a stout? Ahead. That's not actually not bad. Yeah. Bad. I ain't mad at it. Yeah, so th this is our oatmeal stout. So this is a um, pretty popular beer that we brewed uh, earlier this year in, in the winter. Um, but it's, uh, you know, chocolatey. You're going to get coffee notes. You're going to get all those things. Um, but it's one of our darker beers, and it's a lower ABV, so we say it's perfect for breakfast, brunch, dinner, or supper, depends what you call it, um, and everything in between. So. Did you say breakfast? Right. Breakfast. I've recently learned, uh, now I don't want to get racial, but when it comes to white people, <laughs> camping and brunch, y'all just looking for excuses to drink in the morning. Just white people? You think colored people camp? <laughs> I don't know. Um, I'm here to tell you no. No. <laughs> I don't camp. I'm not a big brunch fan either. And I still drink in the morning. <laughs> Fuck yeah, you do. <laughs> that doesn't sound good. Yeah. They have no idea what time we're filming at, by the yeah, way. No, it is 7 p.m. And he's been drinking since 7 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cheers to the stout. Cheers. <laughs> That's our interview with Big Beaver. Can we get a clap? Thank you guys so much for being on the show. Thanks for having us. That was Appreciate great. It. You're officially Cerveza City certified. Last 60 seconds is yours. That camera, gentlemen, hit it. For all you fans of Big Beaver Brewing out there, uh, just so you know, we're, we're actively looking for a location and we hope to have something open um, to you wonderful people by spring 2021. And uh, keep an eye out for uh, our beers in the stores and new beers coming down the road. Thanks. Gentlemen, you say you got a location coming. I just need to know, is there going to be big beaver all over the brewery? Juan more beaver joke. Juan more <laughs> beaver joke. Tune in next week for our season finale. Ladies, we'll do it. Fuck it. We're at Shilta Field. Good night. <laughs>